Uh, Speaker Perez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I don't know if you want uh, the nice speaker or the frank speaker, uh, but unless I hear otherwise, I'll just be the frank speaker. That'd be that's either way. <laughs> this is a. Um, it's been a very interesting conversation, and quite frankly, a frustrating one as we move forward. As I think of the university, I think of a university community. I think of not just the central operations, not just the administration at a campus, but every element of what makes the university community work, and then how it relates to the broader state and how it relates to the broader communities surrounding our campuses. And as I hear some of the discussion going forward about what the realities we've endured and what the expectations we have going forward, I sense a bit of disconnect. A disconnect based on the expectation of predictability for the university as such, and not the same level of commitment to predictability for the constituent members of the university community. And then we talk about expectations of other things that the state might do to correct for previous problems. There's been reference to the increased cost as they relate to unfunded pension liabilities. The governor and I are very familiar with that. That's why we moved forward on broad-based pension reform last year, because that was a reality for so many different elements of state government. This university can't exist in a bubble. It has to deal with those same sets of obligations. It has to be introspective in not only what it does for its line workers, but what it does for the most highly compensated individuals in the university system. When there is a discussion about the 20 years of holidays that were taken, that isn't an external decision made by those outside of the university. It was multiple players making the same irresponsible decision to not look at the long-term obligations. When we talk about debt refinancing, in purely numeric terms, it is clear that there is a benefit both to university and to the state in terms of our debt package. But this exists too in a broader context. There are those concerns about what the out-year implications are for potential increases to student fees, to our ability to maintain adequate employment within the university, which are both essential to the role of delivering a quality education to our students. And so I want to make sure that as we move forward and as you come to Sacramento to ask us to approve that which you like in the governor's proposal, because it is still a proposal, and we will vet this as we vet every proposal from every governor. The broad strokes of what the governor has proposed are not only a great signal that we have turned the corner, but they are a wonderful starting point of what we do moving forward. It has not yet been adopted, and there will be significant debate within the House, to be sure, and also within the Senate. Let's be clear. Of the 80 members of the Assembly, 38 of them are brand new. This is your chance to make a first impression. If the discussion with the members of the legislature has the same tones as the presentation here, I do not think you will be successful in achieving the outcomes that you want. So this is the benefit of, of previewing it with me before you try to sell it to the folks who you hope will pass the elements of the budget that you like. There is an absolute value in what we've done together, broadly, in creating the circumstances by which we could pass Prop 30 and continue uh, to express our commitment to education, K through 12, and higher education. But let's be clear as we're talking about expectations of increased funding right now. It doesn't exist. The reality of Prop 30 is that the good news is we are broke. Being broke is a huge improvement over the circumstances we've been in over the last several years. It does not mean that there is a significant amount of money to backfill for previous cuts. You are all mindful of the collective impacts of those years and years of cuts, but they were also born on many other sectors of this state. Now, let's look at some things that concern members of the legislature as they deal with how we express our commitment to the university. 
The reality is over the last several years, we've made roughly $900 million of cuts, and you increase fees $1.4 billion. Fee increases were disproportionate to the level of disinvestment from the state necessitated by the gravity of the financial crisis we're facing. Now, to be clear, the university did well, did well in addressing the needs of the neediest students in the return to A formula and making sure that the cost of education did not go up for the neediest of our students. But for the broad middle class of our student population, there was no approach to mitigate that impact. That's why I was so happy to work with students from across the state to try to pass the middle class scholarship last year. We got it out of my house on a tripartisan basis, fell short in the Senate. But just because we've begun to turn the corner, just because we have seen a increase, even though it is marginal, in the level of funding anticipated in the governor's proposal, it doesn't mean the problem is solved. And it doesn't mean that the problem of college affordability has gone away from our students. The problem isn't solved just by not increasing fees for students going forward. We need to really address the increase that our students have endured over the last several years. And that doesn't just impact our undergraduate students. There is a huge problem with respect to our graduate students and our professional school students. Not only are we losing so many to other great universities, but even those that choose to stay within the university system are then hamstrung by the, 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 the amount of debt that they graduate with. It limits the choices that they make and the options that they have to make their full imprint on this state. That is a very real problem that we all must address. We need to figure out a way to look at these things as collaboratively as possible between the university and those of us in state office. But we need to be very mindful that higher education and K-12 through education are virtually the only places where there are any restorations to the cuts in this year's budget. It is a clear expression of the governor's commitment, which I think will be well met by the legislature. Uh, but we need to be very clear that we have an expectation in the legislature that you do no additional harm to access to the university as you treat all of your students, not just your undergraduates. And the decisions that we make here will impact the way that this budget and successive budgets are viewed by the legislature. Let me speak to one item in particular. This notion that the additional $125 million that the governor and the legislature was able to find in the waiting days of last year's budget discussion as a buy-down for a proposed uh, fee increase was essential to do in that moment. It does not create a new model for you. Do not expect that you can propose a graduate or professional student fee increase and then come to us and find a buy-down. What you will find is we will come back to you and say, what are you doing to executive compensation? You will find a speaker that is less receptive to your efforts to stop legislation that is aimed at limiting your ability to compensate your executive uh, officials at the level that you have. Why? We've stood with you because we understand that we need to be fully competitive in attracting the best administrators, the best researchers, the best uh, 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 clinicians to have a world-class institution. But we also need to have the best students. And if we make decisions that undermine our ability to have those world-class students, it will be met with a similar reaction by my colleagues in the legislature. So I think that what the governor has proposed and what we're discussing today is a good framework and a very positive sign of us turning the corner. But we have to be very clear in how we move forward as we try to grow this university and as we try to grow the state back as the economy recovers. Nothing can be done in a way that undermines our commitment to a broad-based university community that actually is continuing its commitment to affordability and accessibility. Thank you.